Welcome to How to Garden. Today I'd like to give you a little garden tour. This is my main veggie patch. Right here I have some cabbage growing. Next to it right here are my sweet potatoes, all done in buckets or large pot in one case. Over here are my tomatoes. They're doing very well. Down there I have some peppers. They're just starting. Right here is a key lime tree that happens to have a yam growing on it. These are the bobbles that'll be my yams for next year. I'll harvest these later. Probably mid-January or early February and set them aside so I can start new yams next year. Got a bed right here. I haven't really uh, planted anything in yet. I haven't decided on what I want to put there. This is my avocado tree. It's a Florida avocado grown from seed. It's about three years old. These spots here are sunburn. You wouldn't think a tropical plant would get sunburned, but it does. This is my Satsuma wari. It is a type of tangerine be more precise it's a mandarin it's about four years old and it's on its second fruit over here are more yams and right here is my lemon tree look at the size of these lemons We'll walk around to the other side of the lemon tree where you can see a little better how covered in fruit it is. This side we've already picked a lot of them off of. So as you can see, I'm starting to get ripe fruit. I've actually uh, picked about 30 of them so far. Probably got another 30 or 40 to go. This is a Ponderosa lemon. They were originally developed as a juicing lemon. Their flavor is absolutely extraordinary. Even the leaves on this tree smell good. This is pigeon pea. step back a little bit so you can see exactly how big this is it's about 20 feet tall it's the largest of my pigeon peas I have going in my yard this is a perennial lives for three four years they get pretty big if they're grown in an open area like this one is this produces a pea that is edible also happens to be a nitrogen fixer, so you can use it as a great chop and drop. In this case, I'm using it to shade for another tree that I planted last year. Well, more precisely, my daughter planted last year. That is back here. This way, it doesn't get burnt out back here by the Florida sun during the summer. This is a pomegranate. Which, uh, this pomegranate also happens to have a yam growing on it. This is mustard greens. They're coming up on their own as they have done the last three years. There's a variety of them here. They come up in various spots in my yard. Anytime I lay something out and kill off a spot, 
they come right back. Very good quality mustard greens too. Gotta love volunteers. This is my Peruvian apple cactus. These things get huge. They bloom at night with a huge, huge flower and then you get a nice fruit that's similar to dragon fruit. It's that little red thing up there. Generally speaking, this thing is completely covered in them this time of year, but most of them we've already picked and eaten, or a squirrel came by and got. This down here is African potato mint. It's completely covered this area. When these go dormant in a few months, there'll be a lot of little potatoes here. Here I've got some tomatoes in a pot, another tomato in a pot, and this is a tormatillo. Never grown a tormatillo, so that's kind of exciting. It's already blooming for me. Down this side of my main bed, I've got another tomato. I had a row of Swiss chard here, but the bugs here in Florida, there's something to deal with. They've already came by and eaten those, and they did it pretty much overnight. And here's some broccoli. These broccoli were a gift of seeds from Carolina Gardener. Thank you very much. They're doing very well. This is a Illinois Dwarf Everbearing Mulberry. And it's starting to go dormant for winter, so it's not completely covered in leaves like it normally is. However, it does have a piece of fruit for me. This is a Celeste Fig. Produces extremely good fig, though when growing it straight into the ground here in Florida, it tends to grow very slowly due to root, not nematodes. This tree is actually about nine years old at this point. And at one point it completely died down to the ground because I had somebody spray the entire area right here and they killed it all the way down to the roots and then came back. Next up is a small palm. This particular palm is a Bahamas coconut. The next is another pomegranate. This one's been here for about three years. It should start producing in the next year or two. And then over here I have two different types of chaya growing together. This chaya right here is really good for eating. You gotta boil it for 20 minutes to make it safe due to cyanide. This one over here isn't grown for cooking, it's grown for the blooms. Fortunately, it doesn't have any right now. It has a really lovely white bloom that attracts butterflies and other pollinators. What we got right here is another mulberry. This is a red mulberry. And it's also starting to go dormant. Right here is a loquat. And it's pretty happy. I grew this one from seed. This is a more of a forested area, kind of like a little food forest I got going over here on the side. We've got bananas. These are ice cream bananas. We've got ginger all over the place in here of various types. 
Got a nice little banana pup coming up there. And we've got shampoo ginger coming up. We just harvested a little bit of shampoo from that one. We've got longevity spinach. And cassava. More ginger. This plant right here, with those leaves right there, is a Jamaican rosary pea. Do not eat that one. Got a little nursery over here. Various things stuck back here. More bananas. More ginger.